Hello and welcome to Pixel Magic Tutorials. I am your host Geekman and today I'm going to teach you how to create college ruled notebook paper in Photoshop from scratch. A couple of assumptions that I'm making right off the bat. The first one being that you're using Photoshop CC 2015 or later. If you're using an earlier version of Photoshop then some of the effects may not work as expected. Second, I'm using Windows so if you're using a Mac whenever I say hit the control key on the keyboard that means hit the command key and when I say hit the alt key on the keyboard that means hit the option key. With that out of the way let's get started by creating a brand new image uh, in Photoshop by hitting control N on our keyboard to bring up the new image dialog box. Let's name this notebook paper uh, and let's use the document type uh, US paper and letter size. So that would be a width of eight and a half inches, height of 11 inches, resolution of 300 pixels per inch, Color mode is RGB at 8-bit. Background contents don't matter. They will change. Uh, color profile is RGB, Adobe RGB 1998, and we're using square pixels. Let's hit OK, and here is our new image that is a perfectly sized piece of paper. Now, uh, what we have to do first is unlock the background layer by hitting the little lock icon on the layers palette, and then renaming it as paper because that's what this bottom layer will be. Uh, the only thing that we need to do in order to make college ruled paper is to go down here to layer styles, go to pattern overlay, and then select normal for blend mode opacity of 100%. And then under pattern, click on the little arrow, then click on the sprocket, go down to color paper, uh, hit OK when it asks if you want to replace your patterns and then scroll down until you find Notebook. Very simple and easy. Click on that and then the scale that we want is 595%. Link with layer is checked and that's all you have to do. Look at that. We have college ruled paper, but it's not exactly notebook paper. Notebook paper usually has a red line going down the left hand side, which is showing you where your margin is going to be for writing whatever it is that you're writing. It also needs three hole punch along the left hand side, and there needs to be a header or title area up at the top for you to write your name and the date or the title of your project or whatever it is that you're doing. So. Let's get started on making the rest of this notebook paper so that it actually looks like it's from a notebook. So the next thing that we need to do is we're going to give this a header up here at the top of the paper. So let's create a new layer and let's name this new layer header because that's what we're putting in there. And we now need to change our foreground color to the same color that you see here in our notebook paper, all the off white color. So you can just color pick that if you so wish, or you can use the exact color that I'm going to use, which is F7, uh, F2, FD, which is a very, very, very light purpley color, which is uh, an, uh, an, uh, kind of the entirety of the whitish paper. If you took all of that and then uh, averaged it out, it would come out to this color. So that's why I use this color. Uh, then what we need is our rectangular marquee tool. So you can hit M on the keyboard to bring up the rectangular marquee, or you can click on your toolbar on the rectangular marquee tool. And we want to use a new selection. We want to use a feather of zero. We want to use a style of fixed size and the width is going to be uh, the full width, which is 2,550 pixels wide. And the height that we're going to use is going to be 335 pixels high. You can then click anywhere on the document and it will create the uh, selection exactly the size that you want. So it will be the full width and 335 pixels high. And then we uh, we'll fill this selection with our foreground color by hitting alt backspace on the keyboard then control and D to deselect then hit V on the keyboard to go to your move tool or you can go up here to the move tool then we want to hold down shift and then click and drag straight up until it snaps to the top of the document and you then have the header of your piece of paper. The next thing that we want to do is we want to create the red line 
going down the left hand side of the paper. So we're going to create a brand new layer and we're going to call it red line. Uh, and then we need to change our foreground color once again to a red color so that we can make our red line. Now the color that I'm using is EA8080, uh, which is this kind of soft red color, almost getting towards pale pink, uh, which to my eye looks the most like the red line used in most notebook paper. So once we have that, we got to go back to our marquee tool. So let's hit M on the keyboard to bring back the marquee tool. We're doing a new selection, feather of zero. Style is going to be fixed size. And the width that we're using is going to be 10 pixels. And the height that we're using is now going to be the full height of the document, which is 3,300 pixels. We can then click anywhere on the document to create our red line. We then need to fill it, which is Alt and Backspace again to fill it, then Control and D to deselect, then go to the V tool, uh, which is the Move tool. I'm sorry, hit V on the keyboard to go to the Move tool. We don't really need to do that, uh, but it's easier for you to see what you're doing if you've got the Move tool because it's a, a very big black arrow. Uh, what we're going to do with this now in order to get it precisely where we want it is uh, use the transform tool. Now we could just click and hold down shift and drag it and approximate where we want it to be. Okay, that looks just about good. However, what I want to do is I want it to be exactly where I need it to be. And we're going to use the transform tool for that. So let's hit control T on our keyboard to bring up the transform tool. And then up here in the options bar, you'll see an X and a Y. That's the placement of the object on your image. So we can then go over here to the X, um, X option, and we can change the X to where we want this to be. And where we want it to be is at 360 pixels. And that puts it exactly where we want it to be. So then we can hit enter twice on the keyboard to accept that. And we now have our red line exactly where it needs to be. The next thing and the last thing that we need for a clean sheet of uh, notebook paper is to create a uh, three hole punch in th uh, three holes basically in the paper to make three hole punch, one at the bottom, one in the middle and one towards the top. So what we're going to do is we're gonna create a brand new layer. We're gonna name this holes so that we uh, know what we're working with. And then we are going to go back to our marquee tool, M on the keyboard but we're using the elliptical marquee. Now you can get there by clicking on the marquee tool and then dragging out on the flyout menu until you see elliptical marquee tool or keyboard shortcut, hold down shift and hit M until you see the elliptical marquee pop up on the marquee tool. You are then ready to use the elliptical marquee. And what we're gonna do is add new selection, feather of zero pixels, anti-alias is checked, fixed size and width of 110, height of 110. And then you can click anywhere on the document to make that circle. Then we wanna fill that with whatever color you want. So since we already have the red chosen, we can then just hit Alt Backspace and that fills it. We can then hit Control D to deselect and we now have our circle. All right, I'll just go back to my move tool so you can see what I'm pointing at here a little easier. So we then have this, and then just like we did with our red line, we're gonna use the transform tool to move this to the exact position that we want it to be. So we're gonna hit Control T on the keyboard to get to the transform tool, and then we're gonna change the X and the Y positioning to exactly where it needs to be on the document. And that would be 150 pixels on the X, and on the Y, we want it to be at 1,650 pixels, which is exactly dead center on our document. You can then hit the check mark up here, or you can hit enter twice on the keyboard to accept that change. Then we need to duplicate this layer twice so that we can add on two more holes. So we're going to hit Control J twice on our keyboard, that's Control J, Control J, to make two copies. Then we are going to select the middle copy, which in my case is called holes copy, and we're going to control T to transform it one more time, and then we're going to change its position on our page, the Y position, to 450 pixels. 
450, and that moves it up here. We can then hit enter twice on our keyboard to accept the change, and then select holes copy to or the top holes layer. We then hit control T on our keyboard one more time to, uh, to transform it. Then we're gonna go up here to the Y position, and we're going to change that position to 2880, and then hit enter twice, and we now have our three holes on our paper. But we need to have them uh, be actual holes instead of just circles on the paper. So what we're going to do is we're going to combine these three because we don't need them to be on separate layers anymore. We only need one layer with all the holes. So let's select the top layer, holes copy two in my case, and then hold down shift and click on the bottommost layer of holes, which in my case is called holes, to select all three. We then hit control E on the keyboard to combine them all to one layer. Now we can turn off this layer like so, because we don't need to see it anymore. What we do need though is to make a selection of the three circles. So we're going to hit control on our keyboard, holding that down, we are then going to left click on the thumbnail of the layer, which makes a selection of the three holes. We can then go down to the paper layer, uh, which is where we're going to be uh, making these holes. And right now we have a selection of the holes themselves, but what we want is to select everything else and not the holes. So we wanna hit Control Shift I to invert the selection, okay? Which you can now see there are marching ants along the outside of the paper and around the circles. So everything is selected except this center part of the circles. So now that we are on the paper layer, the bottommost layer, we can then hit Add Layer Mask on the layer menu, and that will cut out the holes. So we now have holes in our paper. And we have now finished paper, but this is a very clean and unused piece of paper. And most of the time in my artwork, and possibly in yours, what you want is used paper, something that looks as if it has been held in somebody's backpack or has been folded up or wadded up in somebody's pocket for a long time. So I'm going to show you how to add wrinkles to your paper. Now the, the first thing I'd like to say is you no longer need the holes layer so you can throw that away. We don't need it anymore but we do want to create a brand new layer above the red line layer and we want to name this wrinkles. Okay then what we need to do is go to the gradient tool by hitting G on the keyboard or uh, clicking on the gradient tool over here. And then we need to set our foreground and background color back to their default. Now you can do that by clicking on the little icon over here of black and white, or you can just hit D on the keyboard and that will change it to black and white. We then wanna make sure in the options bar for our gradient tool that we are using foreground to background and skip over these for a moment and we wanna use the mode of difference. You can choose that by clicking on it and then choosing difference. Opacity 100%, reverse is unchecked, dither and transparency are both checked. And then we get to choosing which one of these uh, types of uh, gradients to make. Now you can use any or all of them if you so wish. Uh, I will start by using linear. Uh, and all you have to do now is on the wrinkles layer, just draw a bunch of gradients any way that you want. And it will start creating all of these cool looking uh, effects because you're basically overriding each, uh, each time that you create a gradient, you are overriding that gradient with the next gradient. So they keep overriding each other until you get this cool effect. Now you can switch it up by changing to different uh, styles of gradient uh, to get different looks. As you can see, uh, the more that you do, the more wrinkles you will have in your paper and the uh, cooler the effect will be overall. If you don't want so much, uh, so many wrinkles in your paper, then just don't do it as much or don't do it at all. Whatever you want to do, it all works to your benefit. Uh, and it's your artwork, so whatever you want to do. So I think this is good for the amount of wrinkles that I would like in my paper. So what we need to do now is we need to go up to filter, stylize, and emboss. 
Once we do that, you'll see that it does look like wrinkles on a gray piece of paper. And the angle that I'm using is 45 degrees. The height of 25 seems to work best for this resolution. And the amount of 100% is great. So let's hit OK. And we now have our wrinkles, but they're a little muted for my taste. So we can bring up our levels, Control L on the keyboard uh, to, to bring up the levels. And then we can bring the leftmost uh, slider and the rightmost slider in to enhance the wrinkles and make them stand out a little bit more. So uh, you can bring it in as much or as little as you'd like. Uh, I have found that somewhere around 80 on the black side and somewhere around 175-ish on the white side seems to work pretty well. So then just hit OK once it looks the way that you want. And then really all we have to do is change our layer mode to um, hard light, uh, where there it is, to hard light and then change the opacity all the way down to about 15%. Uh, that's 16, I'll just make it 15. And you can see that the wrinkles are there, but they don't overpower the paper texture. And that's exactly what we want for our paper. And then we are done. You can turn off the paper, the wrinkles, or leave it on. Either way works great. The only thing I would say is that this is not yet complete because if I turn off the wrinkles, keep your eye on the cutouts for the three hole punch. If I turn it back on, they go a little gray. And that's because the wrinkles are covering the entire paper. Let me turn this on. And the entire paper, including the circles. So we wanna get rid of that. And the best way to do that is hit control on your keyboard and then click once on the thumbnail of the uh, layer mask of paper to make a selection of that layer mask and then on wrinkles add a layer mask and you will then cut out the circles. So there you go you've got everything that you need for a piece of paper. You can then select all four layers by clicking on the topmost layer and then holding down shift and clicking on the bottommost layer and then right clicking and doing convert to smart object and you can rename that as notebook paper and you now have finished notebook paper complete with wrinkles. I hope that you enjoyed this tutorial. If you did, please give me a thumbs up, leave a comment, and subscribe. I create new tutorials every Tuesday. And once again, this is Geekman signing off for Pixel Magic Tutorials.